Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, <clears throat> this is the Digital Asset Investor, and wait until you see what I'm about to show you. When I started this journey, I thought I was going to talk about for three years, it's three years ago, or May 2018, um, I was going to start talking about crypto, and the main thing I was into was XRP, and my channel became pretty Ripple XRP centric. I never in a million years thought that my channel would lead me to covering what I'm covering today, but I'm guided by the truth and I'll show you their own words and the words I'm going to show you today, to me, there's no other word than just purely disturbing, okay? And I'm just going to let you decide for yourself. But first, I want to show you what XRP has done in the last few days. Check this out. This is the return rates. We've got, uh, we're up 12% in seven days, 60% in 30 days. On the year, we're up 449% XRP is. Considering that we've been sitting in a, in a SEC lawsuit, that's pretty amazing. Now, this is true. This was my first thought this morning. I used to think this whole Clayton Hinman Ethereum free pass thing had a real bad smell to it. I'm now convinced it's much worse than I thought, and that's true. It is. I want you to watch this clip, and I told all of the attorneys and John Deaton and Jeremy Hogan and Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, Stuart Alrighty, that they might that they're going to want to see this, and I stand by it. This thing, this video on Twitter has been watched 112,000 times already, folks. And the and yesterday was a slow day. It's already been. I put it up yesterday afternoon. You need to listen to it, then you need to listen to it again and again, because this is Joseph Lubin, the, the, the co-founder of Ethereum and the founder of Consensus, and I want you to watch and you just make your own judgment. So we are big friends and fans of, uh, of that organization. I think they're, they're really understanding the space well. Uh, they are applying uh, this thing called securities law uh, to, uh, business, to business in America and other places uh, as they have done for, for many decades uh, successfully. They're identifying fraudulent projects. They're identifying obvious transgressions of securities law. Um, but they, they haven't had a heavy um, touch really. Um, they've been gathering information. They've been taking some actions. They've been very clear that they're, they understand there is this new construct. Um, very clear. This uh, protocol based open platform. So you think they get it? Uh, yeah, we believe they get it. Um, they've introduced a new construct decentralization into their thinking. Uh, so in addition to the Howey test, uh, they have this new construct uh, that they're seeing certain things in. So they consider the Bitcoin network uh, and token um, and issuance mechanisms. They consider the Ethereum network token and issuance mechanisms to be uh, decentralized and uh, therefore no transactions involving those particular assets are considered to be uh, transactions of securities. They have not uh, said the same thing about other tokens, the, the Ripple token for instance, and they uh, were clear that they were going to come out with statements to uh, to sort of assess these different tokens uh, and I believe they've made all the statements about decentralization that, that they're going to make. And so How does he know that? How does he know that they've made all the statements they're going to make? How does he know that his quote big friends at the SEC are not going to make any more statements and that they've closed the door on this decentralization conversation? Um, Bill Hinman, Director of Corporate Finance, has been very clear uh, about uh, what you... There's that word, very clear again. I've heard that from Jay Clayton. He's referring that to Bill Hinman. Now I'm hearing it from Gary Gensler. Very clear. ...do and what you can't do, and uh, decentralization is a, a new element that they're working with. All right. John Deaton retweeted that video, and he said, best evidence yet. 
Why did, a, did Joseph Lubin sig, signal out XRP only and point out XRP didn't get the same clarity from Hinman and Clayton as Ether and Bitcoin? I've said it since 1121. Six days after Ripple and XRP were sued, the lawsuit was used as a weapon. Now, watch what I found this morning. Turn your ears on, folks, because I want you to hear this one, too. This is Mike Novogratz on Bloomberg, June 5th, 2018, nine days before the Hinman Ethereum Free Pass speech. There are bigger decisions to make. You know, Bitcoin is, they've already kind of said it's not a security, okay? But Ethereum, they haven't, they haven't ruled on yet. I, I, I bet dimes, dimes to, to, to donuts, they will say Ethereum probably was a security, but it's not anymore. Uh, and they're gonna, they're stuck because they weren't ahead. There is this group of tokens that were issued, probably 2,500 in total, but in reality, probably 200 that matter, uh, that are in this kind of regulatory no man's land. And they gotta figure out how to deal with that. And they're working on that right now. My gut feeling is they're gonna take it, they're gonna take out a law firm, they're gonna take out a token, they're gonna take out some of the promoters of these things, just to say, dudes, you gotta play by you gotta play by the rules. But when we're talking to them about the going forward in the future, they're very constructive at wanting to, to, to see this new innovative way of financing companies, of of bringing liquidity and access to markets to the general population that they never had. Okay, same day, same interview. Here's another clip you might want to hear. Why would I want to get in front of the SEC or the DOJ right now? <clears throat> You know, it's a great question. Listen, I started by saying the first three years were 98% or 95% retail. Regulators don't come from retail. Their job is to protect retail, but regulators come from institutions, right? Jay Clayton worked at uh, Sullivan and Cromwell. Uh, so they're talking to the guys they knew from the Goldman Sachs's, from the JP Morgan's, the more- How does he know that? Asks if they're regulating mortgages, they call their guy. And so they missed this completely because there was no one playing on it. And so all of a sudden it's late last year and this goes from small market cap to all of a sudden a trillion dollars worth of you know, market cap and you know, uh, Paris Hilton out there pitching coins uh, and everybody in the planet talking about it. Uh, the regulators got worried. I mean, it was interesting, CNBC, not to pick on CNBC. How does he know that the regulators got worried? I think I can see them here. They literally had a show where they were one by one walking people through how to buy the Ripple, the XRP coin. Literally when it was trading at $3.20, having moved from 20 cents eight weeks earlier. From the day of that show, the thing plummeted. Uh, we were short. <laughs> it plummeted uh, all the way back to 50 cents. That was, was peak nonsense? Peak nonsense. But the regulators had to get involved. And so they are getting involved and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. The first thing is, wait a minute, let's calm things down. Let's go after fraud. Let's go after market manipulation. So the first two things regulators are going for are fraud and market manipulation. And it's a good thing. Uh, the Department of Justice talked about market manipulation with these in, uh, indexes inflating their volume numbers. It's all true. And so we're going to knock out some of the, the crap from the system. I actually think it's healthy. Okay, so I think he basically just said that they're going to get some of the crap out of the system like XRP. I th that's my interpretation. <laughs> I mean, now, against the backdrop of everything I just showed you, I thought that we would revisit the clip and insert Joseph Lubin's clip into the interview that Tim Draper did with Gary Gensler. Watch this. You mentioned Jamie Dimon, so let's bring it back to Jamie and J.P. Morgan. What do you think is going to be the the thing that they will have to change the most or lose market share and somebody else is going to do better, faster, you know, serve their clients better than J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs. So in addition to the Howey test, uh, they have this new construct uh, that they're seeing certain things in. So they consider the Bitcoin network uh, and token. Um, and issuance mechanisms. They consider the Ethereum network token and issuance mechanisms to be uh, decentralized and uh, therefore no transactions involving those particular assets are considered to be uh, transactions of securities. They have not uh, said the same thing about other tokens, the, the Ripple token, for instance. 
Both of these guys sure do have a thing for Ripple, don't they? They uh, were clear that they were going to come out with statements to uh, to sort of assess these different tokens, uh, and I believe they've made all the statements about decentralization that, that they're going to make. And so, um, so he he believes that they've made all for some somehow he knows that the SEC has made all the statements they're going to no, make about decentralization, and then Novogratz knows that. Apparently, he acted like he knew who Jay Clayton was talking to. JP, he said J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs, his words, not mine. What is going on here? And Director of Corporate Finance has been very clear. Uh, you, can, you can just hear the bankers panicking right now. And then they all line up and they wrap their arms together and they say, we're not letting this happen. And then it keeps going. And then they say, Okay, well, let's let's go after, let's sue them, or let's go get the government. The press planning, they plant the press stories, they put out lawsuits, they create as much of a fuss as possible, they try to get their government friends involved, and then they go, oh, God, this thing's happening. Okay. And then I want to play you this one. This is from Stefan Huber. Found another bombshell, Gary Gensler, in his reading on public policy. This is when he was at MIT. Now, <clears throat> he very clearly, in this clip, and you'll see it, very clearly says that the SEC, not Bill Hinman and his personal opinion, but the SEC has determined the theory, Ethereum not to be in a, a security. Now, Gar same Gary Gensler, who now is the chairman of the SEC, is, is letting Bill Hinman go in to the courtroom and say that, no, that wasn't the SEC's opinion. It's, it's, the, it's Hinman's personal view. So which is it? Gary needs to decide. Listen, if I can hit the refresh button here. Crypto finance. You've seen this slide before, but it's been quite volatile. About $220 billion in the last few days. And a little over 50%, 54% is Bitcoin and the other big, big currencies right now on market value, Ethereum, Ripple, and the like. Um, we'll talk a lot about initial coin offerings and are they securities, are they not? But I would note in terms of market value, probably three quarters of this space has already been determined by the Securities and Exchange Commission not to be a security. Bitcoin's 54%. Ether's about, I don't know, 15 points or something like that. So you're all of a sudden up to about 70 points, and then there's a bunch of other things that add up. So about three quarters of the market value right now is what one might call a cash co or a commodity, but not a security. And world and, and that's just irrelevant all right so you can't have your cake and eat it too you got bill hinman coming in and saying it was his personal opinion gary gensler who is now the chairman said when he was in mit that it was the sec that said this was not a security not bill hinman's personal opinion you can't have your cake and eat it too this alone shows you that there that it's not quote very clear the way gary gensler's none of this is clear and they know it's not clear. They're just, but why? The question is if they know it's not clear, why are they coming out and saying it's very clear? All right, I wanted to show you this tweet from David Schwartz. I personally advocate lowering the XRP ledger reserve from 25 to 10 2. So, for those of you that, that know anything about this for a long time, if you, especially like on a, on a ledger or any account that you opened, you had to have a minimum of 20 XRP. A lot of people have several accounts that they don't even use anymore that still have like 20 XRP in them, including myself. <clears throat> so uh, my dream in that scenario is that one day XRP is worth some crazy amount of money and I say, oh, I got, I got an extra $20,000 sitting on this old ledger that I forgot about. <laughs> that would be cool. <clears throat> I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that if they've never watched one of my videos before, I believe this one, in their own words, not my words, I believe this video 
is one of the most important that I've ever put out because their own words have been used here to put a giant puzzle and piece it together in my opinion. Thanks for listening.